All right. I'm here with Kevin Lopez. How are you doing, Kevin? Pretty good. Pretty good. Hey, so can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, a uh, YouTube channel called Four Brain Bros, mm-hmm. uh, which is basically a, a channel that kind of shows off uh, the city of Wichita. We vlog. Um, we do other things. <laughs> um, we do like react videos, all types of things that kind of just shows off either the city or events that are going on. Um, yeah. in Wichita. Sure. And it looked like just looking back at your channel, you've been doing it for five years on June yeah. 1st, I think. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So we're getting right, right around five year mark, which I, I started in, I was, I was a sophomore in high school okay. uh, when I started it. And, um, I, I was, it was kind of off and on obviously with like school being a problem. Right. Um, that that kind of you know would mess with my uploads but now i kind of have more time and kind of prioritize it so um i've been uh, uploading at least twice a month hopefully uh sometimes i i can't do that but yeah that's that's my goal with these podcasts is try to do twice a month but that's it can be difficult but yeah for sure uh, so how did you come up with the name four brain bros yeah um well okay so to to really like get at the very beginning of it um my younger brother, um, who was just three years younger than me, it, like all he did when he was younger was watch YouTube. And mm-hmm. for me, even up until high school, YouTube was kind of like, um, kind of more of like, oh yeah, I knew there were some interesting videos, but I never was really on it. I'm more of like, I would love to watch like documentaries and yeah. I just didn't really care. But um, I, I think it was just like one day my brother was like, um hey you like to you know make or you want to make films uh you can just do it like short films on on youtube and that kind of like piqued my interest so uh i didn't really believe him but he's like super techie he he knows a bunch of stuff so um we got some editing software we just started recording i think like gaming videos at the very beginning um just to you know test it out and i definitely got addicted like my whole goal is to like make films one day Cool. And this kind of is almost like practice almost. I, I've learned a lot, definitely like on the editing side and everything. Right. Um, and with the name, uh, we, we couldn't think of anything. Uh, we wanted something <laughs> just like super unique. Right. And um, originally we, we wanted it to be like four people, um, right. and like a group. And we really didn't have two other members. It was just like <laughs> me and him. So yeah. we decided, um, okay, we're going to call it Four Brain Bros. And we'll come up with, uh, with people later, which later on, um, I met my wife now and uh-huh. she's in it. And then my best friend, Chris, is in it. Um, so now we have this, this small group. Uh, and it, it's perfect because we all have like different uh, characteristics. Like we're all unique. So yeah. it makes it fun. Very cool. So did you know even back like in high school then or before high school, you wanted to make films since then? Oh yeah. Um, since I was v- super young, um, yeah. my older sister, um, just has like insane knowledge about films. She, she's probably seen everything. Um, mm-hmm. and so, she, you know, she got me interested in it. And in high school I did, um, I was in rep theater. Mm-hmm. Like I, I like, I like to act and everything. And, and that's where I think more in high school, I started realizing like if I, if I actually, you know, get a camera and start editing, I can create my own stuff, you know? Yeah. My whole mindset when I was younger was I got to go to film school. Right. Then after film school, move up to some type of production company. But um, obviously now, especially now, it's not always like that. You yeah. know, you know, anything can really happen if you just work on your own. Yeah. Before I forget, where'd you go to high school at? Uh, Northeast. Okay. Um, out here in Bel Air, well cool. now in Bel Air, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. I grew up East Side. I grew up on Andover, so. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know the way far. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, are you kind of like a cinema junkie then? Are you like watching oh, sure. Ben Hur and all the oh, old, yeah. old classics and everything? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, like uh, almost cheesily watch Citizen Kane too much. Yeah, uh, which is embarrassing to say, but I still yeah, haven't seen sure. that one. It's one of the ones. Everyone's like that's such <laughs> exactly. I knew I was gonna get that reaction. No, no, yeah, you got to see it. You got to see it. That is. Like when you watch that movie, you're not even gonna believe like the time period that they made it. It was, right. it's it's strange. Yeah, yeah. I'll check movie. that out. Um, so, do you have any desire then to go to like a film school, like a proper school or anything like that? Or what's yeah, your for sure? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's really like the end goal because, um, obviously, I mean, okay, there's two parts. I I think that um, film school can be important, or it definitely is important. It definitely mm-hmm. gets you uh, into openings, but um, at the same time, 
really for the most part you have to go to east coast west coast for that um right. for you know top film schools and everything um i like it's kind of like a little bit of a dream to have like a my own like production company but i still need to like obtain some knowledge on how to do a lot of things right. there's a lot of things yeah. i don't know so you can learn a lot on your own but yeah yeah it's only almost only so much uh especially when we're talking about like needing tools like in film school you they give you like you know cameras to use i mean right. we're talking about like, cameras that you can never get your hands on yeah unless you're really wealthy so that's something that i you know i'm kind of you know thinking about and just right. trying to figure out what to do yeah what do you use right now software or hardware wise uh yeah um obviously um premiere pro uh is the well yeah i use premiere pro after effects um mm -hmm. photoshop um i actually touched my younger brother told me to sorry my dog no you're fine um my younger brother told me to jump into uh, da vinci but okay. i don't know i'm just so used to adobe systems that yeah. it's just been I don't know. Just got used to it. I guess. Is there a? Uh, I don't use a whole lot of software like that. I use like uh -huh. iMovie and yeah, yeah. stuff like that. Which is so. no, which is good. Yeah, iMovie is actually really nice. Yeah. Um. But is there like a pass for Adobe then, like a monthly deal, or is it? Yeah. I, I imagine um, it can get expensive for that. For sure. Uh, with with Adobe, they do have like a monthly. Um, I know Premiere Pro is like twenty bucks, I believe, a month, okay. which is not too crazy. It's not it's bad. Like, no. It's like a little subscription. Yeah. Um, and it gives you everything. It's not like certain things are locked yeah. and no it's Pay the whole play, yeah. yeah 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 exactly yeah it's it's all unlocked especially if you're especially with you i think if you don't have it right now um once you like jump into it and try it out for a little bit pretty much every other software like i mentioned davinci is yeah. almost the same like you right. can't really change uh in between there so um i think for a lot of people who are like interested in making videos or anything sure i'll just jump into it just test it out yeah, that's cool. Um, so I guess walk me through, like you get an idea for a video. Are you sketching it out what it's going to be like? Or do you just like, okay, I kind of got an idea, which I know some <laughs> of them take a little bit more legwork, obviously, but like yeah. some of your stuff like React, you're just like flipping on and let's go talk to the camera. Yeah. What's your yes. method methodology? Yeah. So like on, if we're like vlogging and to be honest, if you ever watch a video, 90% of the time we're, we have an overall idea. Like for example, one time, I think we all got together um and we're like all right we're gonna record today not sure what and i think one of us said you know like hey i haven't been in cowtown since i was like 10 let's go to cowtown and then we just it turns Bingo, into a yeah. cowtown video but the react videos are more <laughs> of uh if i see something that like bothers me and i see enough <laughs> um, where i could actually react to it yeah um yeah i jump on it I and mean, it's just like a free i mean i take maybe 30 minutes of just recording myself react to videos and you know, obviously chop it up from yeah. there, but, um, we, I also have been moving into more, like, I just started a new, like, I guess, series where we kind of like look into, um, yeah, I just saw the, uh, Scientology. That, one. Sorry, yeah. The yeah. Scientology one. Yeah. So that one, uh, takes a crazy amount of time because I believe it. <laughs> that one, I, you have to, you don't want to sound dumb, I, I, especially like with Scientology, <laughs> you, you think you know something you know, a little bit about it but like you really wanted to know right um and know what you're talking about so that one i would watch pretty much like just because i'm a documentary like junkie i try mm -hmm. to find as much documentaries as i can which is pretty easy you just watch them and, right. and write down things that you've seen and then podcasts are great because mm -hmm. you, you have people's experiences so i watch a lot of podcasts and then really i just take pretty much notes on my phone Mm -hmm. time stamps of certain areas that i liked like so in this documentary exactly so i can clip it out um and maybe react to it talk about talk about it those videos take way too much time but <laughs> um but yeah that's pretty much the process for for what i yeah. do so are you do you have more ideas along those lines then that are probably going to take a little more work but also yeah. i mean it's good for like if you want to be making documentaries at, yeah. at some point that's a really good experience yeah that's that's basically kind of what I'm getting more comfortable in. Cause I mean, <laughs> vlogs are great. I love vlogs cause it's like a documentary. It's like right. real life type of thing. Yeah. Um, and I think it's, I, I kind of have a few ideas of making a legit, you know, documentary like yeah. feature like that, everything, um, here locally. I, I know a lot of people that, um, have the same idea of having their own like production company here in the city, because honestly there's, because 
of so many factors. Um, one being how um, like cheap buildings are like for rent and stuff oh, like yeah. that. So spaces are really cheap here compared to East coast, West coast. Yeah. Um, it, it's, there's definitely a lot of like potential for Wichita to have some type of like major studio. I, I believe, yeah. um, instead of like companies having to go far East and far West, they right. can just go halfway. Does, would you want to stick around here then if you go to somewhere to go to school and then come back I, here, maybe I, I tell myself, so <laughs> I, I honestly say like, yes, for sure. And then like, I have those days where I'm like, Oh, I, I need, I want to go out to New right. York or yeah. in Los Angeles or something. I have those feelings for sure. Right. Um, but there's, again, there's like all those factors where it's like, there's a lot of positives for sure to be here. Yeah. Um, uh, especially money wise and everything. So I don't know, like I, I'm originally from Argentina, like most of my family are from Argentina. Yeah. And I, at a young age, I was lucky enough to like travel a lot. Sure. And, um, a lot of people who haven't traveled, they, they don't, they aren't sure of you know, they, some, might, some people might say, oh, I don't like it here. Some people say, you know, it's right. great. But when you travel, you actually see, you know, the positives and negatives of, of places. And Wichita has way more positives, I think, people <laughs> realize. Um, and so many factors, like, I mean, the, the space, the, the, um, the economics of Wichita, all that, like, is, is a major key for um, a lot of people. And that's one thing that's really cool about our channel, because I never in a million years would have thought that people would message us about around like pretty much the world. Yeah. We have a family from Australia that messages us all the time. They're planning on moving here. So they just That's watch incredible. Our videos. Yeah. Um, a bunch of people around the U S uh, we have a, a family from Argentina, which was really interesting. That's awesome. Cool connection. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, that's something that kind of keeps us going to make the vlogs. Cause um, instead of, like having it set up to try to make Wichita look a certain way or, you know, whatever. Right. Just record and show how it is. Like, yeah. you like it. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, so just taking a quick step back, do you have any favorite, do you watch much YouTube yourself now? Yeah. Who are oh, some sure. of your favorite channels or YouTubers? Um, yeah, I think it's for me, a lot of my favorite channels are kind of, it might seem a little nerdy. I mean, I'm kind of into like Joe Rogan podcast, <laughs> oh, which I use. Love in some it. Of my yeah. Videos. yeah. Joe Rogan's the dude. Um, when I was younger, uh, to be honest, I think even, even in like middle school, when I wasn't really sure about YouTube, my younger brother used to watch PewDiePie, which is sure. like the guy uh, yeah. for YouTube. And that I, obviously he's changed the game and it's definitely like different level. His videos, yeah. yeah. Different level. Like this guy, um, he kind of like, just did his own thing and pretty much everyone has copied him in a, in a certain way. Uh, yeah. We've all learned from him. So I would say he's someone I, you know, like look, look into, look back at that. Um, it's pretty inspiring. Um, oh my God. I have so many channels. I honestly, I'm trying to think of uh, <laughs> put you on the spot a little bit. I know. Yeah. 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 Which I should, I went through, a, I went question. through a phase, uh, Casey Neistat. So yes. we, it oh, was okay. like Casey a year or two sure. into his like, vlogging every day yes. we were yeah. i mean we were 400 episodes behind we would yeah. watch we would watch the new day and then we'd mm -hmm. go back and watch like three episodes and we watched oh, like really? the yeah. whole backlog oh, for a yeah. while. so we were like 500 in a row and Did, he's Casey incredible he's a beast yes yeah he uh his knowledge on like cameras and audio and just his everything studio, he does old, so. i guess old studio now yeah. but his studio was nuts so nice it was so cool so nice yeah like looking at um i th i don't know why i just thought it was so cool that his uh I think he had like a whole screen, like a giant television of all these cameras oh, outside yeah. of his. Just because. Just because for no reason. Um, that was, that's really cool. Yeah. He's definitely, and I think he's in, he's in New York, right? Before uh, I say, he, or he was, he just was moved to LA like uh, yeah, in the okay. last six months or something. Okay. Yeah. So that, um, that's really cool because he's almost the same thing where he like, he just does whatever and just vlogs mm -hmm. anything. And that's like super inspiring. Yeah. Sure. Casey for sure. I, I definitely was. I think it's inspiring hearing him talk about, cause I've listened to him on a couple of podcasts too. And he talks about it in his videos, but um, he had, I think it was a Nike video or something. And he's just yeah. like, we're just going to go travel. I'm going to record it. And that's going to be the commercial. So, yes, yeah, it's so cool. yeah, it's super free. That's the cool thing about YouTube is just like, there's literally zero rules or for the most right. part, there, you know, yeah. you just do whatever right. you want. Um, that's, I think Casey uh, is probably one of the best at just like picking up the camera and going like that. I think so guy. too. <laughs> yeah. I like his philosophy. Again, I'm not like a camera nerd. I use my iPhone to film stuff, but oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I like his philosophy that it's like, 
if some, I don't know, I don't remember how he words it, but like if something breaks, he's like, I'm going to use it because I need something that I can record immediately. He's like, yes, if it's not yeah. there to be used, like it's a waste. Like there's no point in having it in the first yeah. place. Like if you're baby yeah. in the equipment and stuff like that. So that's, yeah, that I actually remember hearing him say that because he was talking about like, he has like old GoPros and right, old exactly. cameras. And he's like, if it, if it turns on, I'm going to use it. Exactly. Um, and that's actually a good point for people who are starting on YouTube because mm -hmm. a lot of people are like, oh, I need like an amazing camera and microphones and all this stuff. But like, honestly, a lot of people do very well with just their phone. I mean, right. honestly, like an iPhone 10, you know, yeah. 11s, their, their recording is amazing. Like, yeah, it's pretty incredible. Their quality is so nice. So yeah, yeah. you don't need all that craziness to, to do right. any of that. Uh, what's your biggest video? Um, man, honestly, and I don't, I never would have thought this video was going to be <laughs> the most viewed, but we have a video, which I can't, I think it's just called, I think it's called Wichita, Kansas secrets. Oh my God. I think that's it? right. I was just, yeah, I Is think that's right. right. Yeah. I okay. Right. So that one, it has like, I think 60,000 views. And the thing that makes me so annoyed is because that video was one of those videos where again, no planning. It was just me and my, my friends. Right. And I was like, I'm just going to walk go around the city yeah. and we're just going to talk about stuff. And I, I even like certain, when we got to a location or we got in a certain area, we're like, Oh, let's talk about this place. I didn't have anything on. I just, just from off what the, I knew off the, cuff, off, yeah. the, off the dome, I was just like, oh, okay, I'm going to talk about this. And, the, and I, I looking back at it, it just seems so cheesy and just like, ah, and in that video out of all of my videos has 60,000 views. And, uh, I don't know. It's good because it definitely brings in eyes and everything. Yeah. But um, at the same time, I'm like, okay, now look at my newer videos, please. <laughs> I've definitely it was, improved. <laughs> do you think it was just like the authenticity of it then? I th it could have been, honestly. Um, I don't know because it, it's not like I put anything like <laughs> that is different. I don't know. Right. Like, I, the title is very similar to all my other titles. Um, I don't know. It's so weird that that one caught on. No idea. Might be why. a time for a uh, Wichita, Kansas secrets too, dude. And <laughs> yes, I thought about this actually um, because I'm like, all right, I got a show that I'm, I'm, I've improved. This is, this is not me anymore. I've, de I've definitely got better, but I don't know. Like at the same time, I'm like, oh, I already talked about all this. It'll like, be we five have, views. Yeah, five views. That, <laughs> that's also my nightmare. It's like, oh, here's part two, and nobody watches it. That's actually another thing that I wanted to bring up that yeah, absolutely. Uh, we, I made a series or a series. It was two videos, basically mm -hmm. two parts. It was one part. Um, I thought that it would be interesting for people who want to move here uh, to make a part one of things that, you know, like the negative side of living. Here. Oh yeah. Okay. And yeah, part the two of positive. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I'm okay. So when I made that video, I thought, okay, I I have good and I have pretty good feelings about yeah. Wichita. So I'm going to just mention what other people say and some of the things that I think at some times for the negative part. Mm -hmm. I mentioned multiple times, like, guys, this is not this is part one. We're, there's going to be a second part. And so I made the video. It got like 10,000 views. Okay, great. The comments, <laughs> awful. Like, like as you probably are aware, but like YouTube – there's certain words that YouTube flags and it'll sure. let you know, like it'll yeah. put it in a little folder and says, Hey, these guys have been flagged. Um, I can't even tell you how many people have been flagged. Defending I mean, Wichita or oh, no, attacking no, no. Wichita? Like, no. Okay. So they're attacking me personally. Like <laughs> they're like, don't you dare speak that way, which I multiple times I said, listen, this is a negative. I have a positive, right? Like next video is positive. People don't I mean, listen to that. No, they don't care. Like one week later I uploaded the very next video was a positive side. We got exactly half the views. I, I don't know if it's like people are more interested in like negativity. So like, I don't know what it is. Sensual is since uh, I can't even say the word sensationalism. Like yes, people want to yeah. focus on the negative side of yes. things. And yeah. And I, I thought I, you know, I, when I uploaded, I was like, all right, well, this is gonna be fine. I already mentioned it multiple times that there's gonna be positive. You know, I like it here. Here we go. Yeah, that was a nightmare. So that's, that's just something you gotta learn if you <clears throat> get on YouTube. Right. I saw one of yours. I was kind of diving back into some of the older stuff too. Um, yeah. And some of the, like the negative hater comments I thought were pretty oh funny Oh my God. Too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That, that always going to be some. Always for sure. Yeah. I, like sometimes, and especially with YouTube, you, you can't really, it's not like Facebook where you know, like you can't tell how old these people are. It could be right. like a really young kid that just says whatever, Poor but yeah. yeah. But sometimes you know that it's a grown adult and you're just like, God, how Come is on. this possible? Yeah. Yeah. So that Wichita Kansas Secrets one, did it 
like get a bunch at first or has it just been like pretty steady over time growth on the, to get 60 or 70,000 views? It honestly was steady. Like, yeah, it, I mean, I remember when it had like a hundred views for a long time yeah. and you know, I just kept making other videos, never thought about it. And I think, I think YouTube like lets you know when your video or it used to let you know if your video hits like 10,000 views, it gives yeah. you like a little email. Cause I never really looked back that far back cause right. I just kept making videos. Yeah. And then I realized, like, why is this at 10,000? And even within, like, a few months, I, I definitely, yeah. you know, I got, I got better with editing and sound and all this, but I did not think that video was going to, like, pop off or anything. It was just... I think that's a good perspective you have, though, because, I mean, I catch myself doing that with, like, podcast download numbers yeah. or YouTube yeah. video numbers. is like, oh, man, this one's got 57 views. Like, yeah. we're almost to 100. Yeah. Like, you just kept going. Which yeah, I think is really up. important to like make it five years, for example. For sure. Yeah. I, I, especially at the very beginning, I was exactly like that. Because at the very beginning, I think we had, I don't know if this is like a YouTube record, but like we had the least amount of subs <laughs> for like three years straight. I'm talking like maybe a hundred subs for yeah. like three years. And I was just like, why am I doing this? Like, this is like, who? no one's watching this. I'm impressed you kept going though. I know. So, so what, ke yeah. what keeps you going then? That, that I point? think... I think like I mentioned, when, when we get comments of people saying like, there is a lot of positive comments for sure. Like there's mm -hmm. some negative, but for the most part, people, I think that, you know, who, who left, which a lot of people who left here, for, yeah. like this is their hometown. And they're like, I love watching, you know, my hometown or videos of my hometown, like all that people saying, Hey, I moved here recently. I watched all your videos and it got me interested. It's just like, I think that's what keeps us going. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, um, because I want to like learn as much as I can for, you know, in film, I think that's another reason. Sure. And also I think it's, it's just fun. Like when you yeah. have a group, of you like fans, doing it. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you just like doing it. Yeah. I think that's another thing. Like if people are starting their channel or a channel or pretty much in anything, um, obviously I don't think you're going to, you can't expect to like blow up immediately, even though you want to like a lot of people have like mini goals. Like I want at least a hundred views, which honestly, even today, like not really a secret, but I'll, I'll look at maybe if my video hits a hundred views mm -hmm. um, again, I think YouTube even, no, I, never mind. I don't think it, they do it anymore, but if I, my video hits a hundred views, I know kind of my crowd. I know the amount of people who are always watching right? Um, because you have subscribers, but then right. you have like an actual group of people that continuously like watch a core you. audience. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and that's something you just got to get used to that slowly grows. Like the YouTube number will grow. Uh, or subscribers will grow. It's just like that group that continuously watches you. That's the most important part because yeah. on YouTube, really all they care about is watch time. And you have the same group watching your right. videos, you know, that's, that's really what's important. Yeah. I'm a big uh, Tim Ferriss fan as well. So I don't know if you yes. listen to Tim Ferriss, but yes. yeah. he always mentions, uh, I think the guy's name is Kevin Kelly, but he's got a paper called a thousand true fans. And so okay. it's about like, it doesn't matter. You shouldn't go after 10,000 subs or whatever. You should go after the thousand people that are watching every video yes. that'll buy or watch everything you do. Yeah. And yeah. That's how that's you become successful. Real. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. That I think, I mean, even in like Instagram and all that type of stuff, it's just like the people who continuously watch your stuff. And that's where like, um, talking to them in the comments or whatever, right. like reaching out, that's like, that's a game changer. Cause I think people who like, especially like, you've probably seen this yourself because your, you guys' Instagram is pretty big. Yeah. Um, when you like respond to people, I think that's immediately, they don't think of you as like, like an influencer that right. doesn't really talk just to people. Just a person. Yeah. Yeah. It's like human being. Yeah. That's, that's like, I think that's huge for, for yeah. social media stuff. For example, on that, the Instagram. So we ran the account for like a year and a half. I was just kind of reposting people's stuff. And then we came out with like a, two minute clip one day that was just like, Hey, this is who we are. Me and my wife kind of yeah. told our story. We yeah. moved away, came back while we love Wichita. Um, and that was our like biggest thing for like yeah. the longest time because people were like, sure. I thought it was some 70 year old man behind this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's true. Yeah, Cause you have your face. Yeah. No, we, we never showed our face before that. So yeah, yeah, that's kind of interesting to see that, but yeah. Yeah, um, Instagram is a whole other level for sure. Yeah, it's an interesting game. So I'm, <laughs> I've, I put all my podcasts on YouTube, which I mean, yeah, that's cool. 70% of them are probably just audio. So it's just like a, you can yeah. just listen to it. But like when I'm at work, I just listen to YouTube videos, whether it has video or not. So yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. But I've been trying to do more of these, which is fun. Um, yeah. But I guess for seven, I, I think you're on like 1700 ish subs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so have you looked into or tried uh, monetization or how does that work exactly? Yeah. So YouTube changed like, I, 
I think a year ago, two years ago, where before, if you had a channel, literally you could get, you're monetized. As long as your videos right. aren't um, uh, copy striked or anything, or copyright striked, um, you're fine. But then they changed it to, they have a certain amount of rules. One of them being, you have to have a thousand subs for mm -hmm. sure. Um, so and then you have to have- for you guys. Check. Uh, and the other one is uh, 4,000 hours of uh, watch time, mm -hmm. um, which 4,000 hours mm -hmm. is not that much. We have 11,000 hours of watch time, but the, the key for YouTube is it is 4,000 hours of the last year. Oh, wow. Um, so some people can lose that status. Okay, so you stop. could like dip in and out of- Yeah, for sure. Wow, that's I didn't crazy. know that because I thought- I didn't know that either. When I, I looked at, I looked into it when it first came out, they're like, no, no, that's not the case. You hit 4,000, you're good. Wow. But they do an annual like review. So they check your last 365 days and that's where uh, wow. you could lose it. Yeah. That's yeah, nice. It's crazy. Yes. So uh, like I said, I've started to put some of these video podcasts on there. Um, mm -hmm. And so I posted one, it'll be three weeks ago on Sunday. Okay. Before this, I don't know if I've gotten over 50 or 100 views. Or so. I, don't, yeah. I don't really care. It's whatever. But yeah. um, this one is now at 55,000 views in three yeah. weeks. Yeah. So I interviewed Arthur Gunn, who's on American yes. Idol. Yeah. And it was kind of a perfect storm of that. Oh, yeah. And so now 30% of my channel audience is from Nepal. So no. yes, yeah, that <laughs> yeah. Is so it's so yeah. cool. Like, the it's pretty awesome. Yeah. 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 That was perfect. Kind of like perfect timing. Um, one of those things where yeah. I don't, you probably didn't expect it to like, not at all. Yeah. I just, so I had seen his like first audition tape where he like auditioned in front of Luke Bryan and oh, yeah. K Perry yeah. or whatever. And so I was like, man, he's really cool. And they're like, he's from Wichita. I'm like, that's incredible. I'm like, I need to try to get him. So I, him. before yeah. his like Spotify and social media is all blew up. I'm like messaging everything, emailing him. And then yeah. like a week and a half later, and he's quadrupled his social oh, yeah. media stuff yeah and so i get an email from like an agent or something i'm like really? oh great i'm never gonna get through yeah, like i have to deal with an agent and yeah. so eventually like a couple weeks later it worked out but i'm just like man i got lucky that i got that email to him initially or something yeah but oh yeah i bet it's impossible to get a hold of him now oh so. yeah oh yeah it's but that's yeah let's talk about perfect timing for sure it's just cra crazy that how that good. works oh thank you yeah. But yeah i hope to get him on for like a follow-up one at some point for so sure. i think that'd yeah, be sweet that'd be but yeah yeah, yeah. But, um yeah. So let's see, what else did I have on? Um, oh, so other local channels who do you yes. collaborate with anybody or do you yeah. are aware of who else is local? Yeah, for sure. Um, so one, um, a, a friend of mine, his name is Cameron. Uh, mm -hmm. he, he has his own, um, videography studio with his buddy Cole. Um, mm -hmm. they have a YouTube channel called Cameron okay. and Cole. Okay. Um, they actually just started, but they, I've known Cameron for two years now. Um, and their videography stuff, um, they're, they're in charge of river city visuals. I don't yeah, know if you've yeah, I've heard, I have heard of it. Yeah. Okay. So they, they do all that stuff. They have like commercials and everything. Those guys, like they're very small right now, but, um, they have so much knowledge of like, obviously because of their, of their jobs, they just right. know everything about cameras and everything. And they, they're like really hilarious personalities. Um, so I definitely wanted to bring them up because those guys are, are really good. Um, there's, there's a channel that like everybody has like their like niche that they're into. Cause I, it, on YouTube, a lot of people think, oh, people just watch YouTube for like vlogs or people just watch YouTube for podcasts. There's a, a channel. Um, uh, oh my goodness. Oh, hold on. Give me one yeah, second. No problem. I yeah. Take your time. I forgot the name. No problem. <clears throat> Okay, there it is. So uh, this guy, James, uh, okay. that I don't even know on a, like I've never even met him, but I've known him for five years on YouTube. He just <laughs> sure. watches our videos and comments. Um, he's like a huge like racing buff. Uh, okay. He has a channel called uh, James Furman Videos. Is uh, he local? His, yeah, local. Okay. Like, yeah. Um, and he's a guy who, again, like he's not trying to work with the you know, biggest, baddest camera or anything. He's just picking up what he's got. Mm -hmm. and just recording races and people um are just and there's just like a group of people that just are so into races and local races and everything yeah. um i just wanted to give him like special yeah, shout out because he was he's I'll been on it for up. a long yeah. time yeah 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 that, that, uh, there's a lot i mean there's there's channels that um are out there that kind of do their own thing um that have like a hundred thousand subs that i they don't really boast that they're from the city so you don't even know until right. like you one day run into them and realize oh my god they're here yeah um 
that's that's super surprising to me because i again you kind of think bigger channels are outside sure you know, you know outside of here but that's definitely not the case right i think the one that was surprising to me um was a couple years ago we were i don't know out somewhere and i saw one of those splurge magazines oh, and yeah. i was reading an article in there and it was like yeah he has a million subscribers or whatever and it was a tanner yes something. Brondar yeah. Or Brond, yeah, yes. yeah yeah and so whatever then so then he like bought a house out in Andover. So like I knew yes. people that would like go by his house and like, yes. I'm just like, that's so crazy. I, when I, we first started, I don't know how we, I think my brother f- saw him or found him or something, but he's like, yeah, he's from here. And you know, I'm watching videos. He's in this mansion with like, right. like crazy weird things inside of it. I'm like, no, he's no, he's not. This dude's in LA or you're, you're tripping right. or maybe he's from here, but he doesn't live here. And yeah, no, he definitely, or I think he moved. I'm not sure if he's still here. I, yeah, I don't know. I'm okay. Sure. Yeah. I think he moved to LA, but uh, for a time he had like a legit like mansion out <laughs> right. in Kansas at one point. And I was just like, there's no way. Wow. That definitely yeah, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. yeah. There's, I think there's, I mean, there's a lot more than you think. I know of a couple, um, I think they have a little kid, maybe two kids, but I just like met them kind of through Instagram mm-hmm. and they have a local channel. I think, I mean, he's got a few hundred or a thousand. I don't know. He's yeah. doing pretty well. I'm just yeah. like, it's pretty impressive. There's a lot of local people. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And a lot of them are, are, they're not like trying to do like the, um, like the conventional YouTube way where you're just trying to get like the normal clicks with like right. clickbait type, you know, type of right. things. They're just doing their own thing and it's just working. It's Which cool. again, there's a core audience for all that kind of stuff. You don't yeah. need to, you don't need to be clickbaity. You just need no. to say, this is Wichita, Kansas. If you want yeah. to watch it, watch it. So yeah, you don't have to. Yeah, exactly. For sure. Um, so I want to mix it up just a little bit. These are some questions I kind of stole from like Tim Ferriss and a couple yeah. other podcasts, but um, what is something that you often recommend to people like your favorite books or podcasts or shows? Anything yeah, for like that? sure. Um, for me, I, I already mentioned before, but there's a f- select amount of podcasts that I think you'd agree with that are because podcasts aren't like scripted. It's not like a show. Yeah. You, you see these people who have in who started businesses or you know people in in politics or whatever um that they tell their own story and you learn so much about them mm-hmm. and that's why i think like joe rogan i'm almost addicted to joe yeah. rogan oh, yeah he's kind of like that person where he just listens and you just talk and speak whatever you have on your mind those type of videos i definitely recommend for people especially i mean if you look up like joe rogan business there's a actual like a side channel for his podcast mm-hmm. that edit uh small clips of people he talks to and they right. and you'll learn about business or you learn about youtube or whatever it is mm-hmm. i definitely recommend because the amount of knowledge you get you don't have to buy anything you don't have to pay yeah, you don't exactly. have to pay for like a master class of learning how to do basically something. is a master class it if is, you yeah. dig yeah for sure yeah that's cool. um that's something yeah i definitely recommend for pretty much everyone yeah absolutely what about just uh like your editing skills and stuff. Is that just trial and error? Are you watching any YouTube channels to learn that stuff? So 90% of it is definitely like trial and error. Cause mm-hmm. when you, cause like one thing you want to do is like be different, but you right. also are learning cause you're watching YouTube. It's like, you're learning from other people. Sure. Um, but the editing side, it, it's two parts. If you see something like you see someone do a certain thing on YouTube and you want to learn how to do it, obviously go straight to YouTube. How do you do this edit? Blah, blah, right. blah. And it, it'll show you. That and then for a long time, I think I was kind of like, I don't like closed minded. Like I tried to do my own thing. So I didn't watch videos for a long time. I just tried to learn on my own, mm-hmm. um, which definitely I think ben- I benefited from because I started realizing what doesn't work the hard way because I would upload right. it. And when I would rewatch it, I realized like that was awful. What, what was I thinking, you know, months down the road? Right. Um, so again, if someone's trying to, do this try to just make a channel or whatever <laughs> i would just say if you can't even edit some people just don't they don't know how or they just are not comfortable with it just put something out and then slowly you can start jumping into yeah um learning how to edit and youtube is like the greatest source of learning yeah I guess. it really is yeah i don't know even i don't know anybody that doesn't use youtube like old yeah, people yeah. like to fix no, their yeah. car or sure. anything really like yeah. house projects you yeah. just go on the youtube yeah for sure yeah I think that's like the main thing. Just if you want to do it, just jump into it and then you'll slowly like learn on your own. Sure. What is a favorite failure you have? (laughs) It's kind of a weird question, but I like this one. Favorite failure. I think on a, oh man, I think one of them would be, I had an idea, which I use now, but I, 
I, you know, you watch channels or whatever, like really big ones, and they all have like these really nice intros and it's really, you know, things that like catch your eye. So I think I was, a, I think right when I started, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to make an intro <laughs> that'll catch someone's eye. And oh my God, I, I made, I put an intro together and it was just like, I like uh, almost like a highlight of old videos. I don't use it today, but it was before I used it a lot before and mm -hmm. my popular videos are on there <laughs> and it is awful. Like, it's just like the, it's not even quality. I'm not even saying quality. I just didn't know what was running through my brain. Cause it's just, <laughs> it just seems cheesy. So I go back time, and watch that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Every time I look back, I try not to look back at those videos, but when I look back at it, as soon as that title runs on or that, that intro, I'm just skipping immediately. It's <laughs> painful, but then at the same time, like I'm later on, because it was so bad and I, I was like almost embarrassed by it, I had to make a new one. So I just made a new one. Mm -hmm. And uh, that one's, I, I like it far better. It's, yeah, it's, for sure. It's like a legit highlight reel of things that we do. I, I don't know. I think it's something that stuck with me because I, I yeah. realized like, um, Sometimes you just have to upload it to realize you hate it. Because I watched, I mean, I don't know if you realize when you edit or make a post, mm -hmm. you look at it like a thousand times and you're like, okay, I think this is good. And then you post sure. it. But then it's almost like when it's live and people are, are watching <laughs> it, you're like, wait, I don't like it. Like, right, exactly. It's too late. You can't, you can't go back. Yeah, oh, I definitely feel that. Yeah, and especially when, when or if it like blows up. Like, for example, that interview I had with Arthur Gunn. Yeah. Some of the comments are not very nice. I, yes, I don't really get yeah. negative comments because nobody really watches any of the other stuff. But not tell you there's get definitely a couple negative ones. ones. Yeah, I know. Like it's pretty I think, funny. I definitely like you have to have. Uh, I, I used to. I, I'm not gonna lie. I think I kind of do this still, where if someone has a, a negative comment, when I when I first started, I was like, you know what you know, that's pretty rude of you. I'm just going to say something funny and uh, respond to it. That's my initial thought every time. <laughs> Man, it is like the worst mistake because then you look even worse. Like if they're just, if they say the most, I mean, it can be subtle. Like, man, I, I hate your face or something like right, that. And yeah. you're just like, well, well you know, you respond yeah. to oh, yeah. then you, Oh man, you're you feeding into so it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Then you have like a, a whole thread of like 30 people responding, you know, to you. It's just, it's not good news. It, right. it, if, Again, if you're doing it, if you're going to do this, if you're going to make a YouTube channel, you can go into your settings and put um, like keywords sure. so you can block certain things because I feel like whatever <laughs> triggers you, you could just put a word in That's there. That's a and, great idea. Yeah. Because <laughs> if someone's like, I don't like your voice, you type in voice and you're just like, I don't want to hear it anymore. You yeah, know, stuff like really that, good that, idea, that blocks yeah. it out. Yeah. It helps for the most part, but like what you're going to see um, when you have a video that has, you know, thousands of views you're, you're going to see comments that you've like never thought of. Like <laughs> maybe I wasn't wearing the right shirt that day right. or whatever. It's just, yeah, you just got to get used to it. Well, I'm sure at some point, I don't know what language I speak in Nepal, but I'm sure I'll get some comments in whatever la that language is. So. And, yes, for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> Especially when you get like emails, like I got a lot of emails. Uh, it, uh, it was from uh, Senegal and oh, they, were, they were trying to, um, they're like working on their visa to come out here and, and stuff. But the entire thing was, and Senegalese, I believe. And sure. I just had no idea what they were saying. And I, I tried to go on Google to translate and, you know, Google translates right. mostly awful. So uh, yeah, it's like one of those things where you're just kind of like, oh, thanks for your response. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I'll just say thank you sometimes yeah, and yeah, move on and move on. Yeah, for sure. What is your definition of success? I think pretty much with everyone for the most part, if success for me is if you're like truly happy and engaged in doing something, um, I think that's success because a lot of, uh, you know, the, the cliche, like, you know, you want to be famous or have a lot of money or whatever it is. But at the same time, everyone has seen those stories about, you know, people talking about, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Elon Musk, but I'm, I just hate what I do right now. I'm so much stress and I, I don't like yeah. the limelight and stuff like that. But that's the thing that, you know, people who start their own little business, it might not be huge, but they yeah. love doing it. And people are happy for years without huge success or success that people would say success, mm -hmm. but they're just happy. And that's, that's for me is what success is. It's, yeah. I like that a lot. That's important. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. I think, I mean, again, for example, Elon Musk, I think he's giving all this stuff away right now. Yeah. It's like, okay. Yeah. So, so then why do you need to have however many billions of dollars? Or... Exactly. I, I actually heard a, someone say that 
a, 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 someone who works close to him say that he he doesn't like being Elon Musk. And, Probably not. I wouldn't. And like yeah, exactly. Yeah. That I mean the amount. First of all, he does like a million things now that we're talking about Elon Musk, and and I don't know how he does all the thousands of things that he does, but at the same time seeing his life i just can't even imagine <laughs> like yeah i don't envy it yeah that's no yeah you i mean he probably doesn't have time to do anything he actually wants to do no for like, sure he's like so driven now to get us to mars he can't yes. like go i yeah. don't know, go have a hamburger with a friend or something like. exactly yeah and he, he's going to mars he's digging tunnels under like major cities and building <laughs> right. cars and like all these things which i think he said earlier um when he was younger like in a, i saw him give a speech and he said when i was younger i wanted to do pretty much what I want to do. Just right. anything I want, I'm going to do it. And he's like, that's what I'm doing now. But that's the other side. You see his personal <clears throat> friends say, um, yeah, he's, he doesn't, he, he said, you do not want to be Elon Musk. Trust right. me. And I, yeah. I get that for sure. I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. What is a life motto that you live by or what's some of the best advice that you've received? Um, this one would probably not to sound cheesy, like really just came from my mom. She, <laughs> when I was in high school, um, I, she, I mean, she likes that I'm into theater. She loves what, that I was an act out or I liked acting and stuff like that. And I had a point where I was like, I don't really know if like I'm good at it or, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. I just had those feelings. And what my mom told me was just like, just push, just keep pushing. Literally. She told me this even younger when I, I, I was because being from Argentina, you play soccer like your whole life. Right. So when I was younger, I felt like I wasn't good enough or as good as, as people from South America, Europe and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And she, she would just always tell me to keep pushing. And that's something like we mentioned earlier with YouTube, like you, if you stop and just like linger, which I, I do have problems with even now, <laughs> like I just kind of think about like, oh, that was a waste of time. Like, why did I do that? Right. But if you just keep going, literally, I mean, that's just like you, you yeah. probably had no idea that that video was going to pop off. You're putting out these podcasts just because exactly. you, know, you wanted to. And then mm -hmm. because you got into that, you're probably going to keep going. And that's probably going to grow your channel um, tremendously because mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. Um, so that's something I live by it, it, with everything I do now, or I try to, I, I say that sure. and I'm like, in the back of my mind, I'm like, yeah, but you didn't want to clean the dishes yesterday. Or whatever. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. That's, that's really important. And I think, I think a common thread or a common theme I've seen on this question when I ask people is it usually does sound cliche, yeah. but those are the things that are that's like truest. Yeah, There's a reason yeah. they're cliche. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And especially when you like hear it from like family, you're kind of like, all right, mom, whatever. But at the same time, like when you realize that you're actually doing it because it's helping you, you're like, okay, I guess mom was right. Yeah. Yeah, Thanks, exactly. <laughs> um, do you have any habits that you've developed over the past couple of years that have most improved your life? Uh, yes. <laughs> I think more, more, probably that on top is maybe time management. I still think I'm pretty lazy now, but I used to be <laughs> a lot more lazy before, yeah. uh, especially in high school. Like even I, I was playing soccer. I had high school, you know, I was in high school playing soccer. I played club. And, and even then when I was making YouTube videos, I still found time to like, I don't know how, but I just didn't do anything. And there's a lot of time that I feel like today um, you feel like you can do so much more, but like in the back of your mind, you're just like lazy. Mm -hmm. I over the years have slowly tried to like cut down my laziness time. Sure. So like time management has been like a huge push for mm -hmm. me. Like if I kind of think like two days in, in advance and then mostly because of YouTube and it's helped me with like my job or like career yeah. wise, I guess. Um, like I think two days in advance, like, all right, this day, you know, I'm going to be free from this time, this time, maybe I can record something, react to sure. this the next day. I'm going to find time from here to here to edit it. Maybe a week down the road, I'll upload it, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, but that's helped me with other things. Like even like, I don't know, cleaning the house. Like, all right, I have this time from this time to clean the house. It'll be right. nice. Then I, I can do lunch or whatever it is. You know, <clears throat> right. Yeah, like absolutely. There's a good book. Um, and I think I mentioned it before on the podcast too, but it's called the war of art. Mm. So it talks about, it's mainly about like creativity and like people like writers, for example, and um, anybody that has any type of creative pursuit, there's the resistance. And yeah. it's like basically your mind giving any possible excuse why you shouldn't do something. Or yeah, like, for sure. And that, I think that ties into that for sure. Yeah. Like you have to push through and you have yeah. to like, yeah, manage your time wisely or it's not going to happen. Yeah. I think f from watching, you know, when you watch documentaries and you start seeing these people who have like inspiring stories where they just didn't stop 
doing what they wanted to do for so long. Mm -hmm. And that's why, that's where they have like, people are so interested in their lives because they push so hard. Yep. Um, it's like when you're lazy or when you're not doing anything, you're like, what am, what am I doing? Let me, let me do right. something. I got to do something. Exactly. Um, so just a couple more questions. These ones are about Wichita. So what is your favorite part of Wichita or are there any like hidden gems that other people might not know about? Yeah, I think favorite parts, I would have to say, I would say favorite thing. I don't know if I have a favorite part of Wichita. I think with Wichita, there's it ha all these positives are basically like community for the most part. Mm -hmm. Being able to like, like I've mentioned before, travel pr from pretty a uh, young age, um, you start seeing like how different communities react to e each other. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, I would say like Wichita has a pretty solid community, like supporting each other. Yeah. I don't see too many people, especially with like small businesses or influencers or whatever. I don't see a lot of people like taking jabs at each other. Right. Um, like you see in like, you know, you know, larger cities or any, or, and stuff like that. That's something that I think is really good, especially yeah. if you're trying to start your own thing. Cause you know, I mean, ran like just like this, you just have random people who just want to support you. And they just do it because, you know, they like what you're doing. That's right. something that's huge. I know a lot of places are not like that for sure. <laughs> They're just kind of like, oh, no, it's a dog eat dog out here. We're going to do what we can right. to, to, to be on top or whatever it is. I but, agree. Yeah, I definitely have experienced the same thing. I think for the most part, everyone's just trying to build each other up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That um, and, and I think like even my family, they're going <clears> to <throat> watch they, when they watch my videos or when I first started making videos. <laughs> when I was younger, I, I'm not gonna lie. I just didn't, I, I always thought about moving like always, right. no matter what, even if I'm extremely poor, whatever I'm moving, I, I, I gotta go somewhere else. Uh, which my dream, and it kind of still is my dream is to live in New York. Sure. And, um, when I was younger, I was like, Oh, you know, I, I gotta get out of here. And then I started making videos that were kind of like, all right, I'm bored. I'm going to go out in the city because this is where I live and just make videos on the city. And then I realized slowly um especially at a young young age that i like it's actually pretty nice here like there's a lot of you're so open to do stuff you're it does of course have negatives but in the long run when i'm thinking about like my like entire life like in my entire future it might make more sense to stay yeah. you know mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if that just comes with age or what, but uh, I think it definitely does. Cause I know, I mean, most of my friends from high school, I mean, they moved away. They're Denver or San Francisco mm -hmm. or yep. Kansas city or yep. anywhere, but here for the most part. So <laughs> yeah. I think it does come back, come with age. Cause like I moved from my job knowing at some point I'd want to come back. So we just moved down right. to Corpus Christi, Texas. And oh, yeah. even just being gone for nine months, we're like, okay, we miss Wichita. And so really, yeah. job opportunity opened back up and we came back, but I definitely agree. It definitely comes either if you move or just with age and you realize, okay, actually it is a pretty good place. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, it has a lot of positives, way more than negatives, especially I think as young people are just like, Oh, we don't have like a nightlife or whatever it is. You know, right. you're just like, yeah, okay. I can kind of see that. But when you, you get older, it's like, I don't really care about that stuff anymore. So then right, you're like, exactly. then what else do I need? Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I agree. Um, so is there anything you would improve about Wichita or what do you wish Wichita had that it doesn't? Oh yeah. This is the best question right here. <laughs> I think so with every like major city and Wichita is actually pretty big compared yeah. to a lot of places. So with every city uh, or major city you see, it's, I feel like their downtown area has a better, I guess, layout. I don't know if yeah. it's because of history or whatever, but with, with Wichita it's kind of it seems a little too spread out for my opinion I feel like especially with the new plans that are coming out for uh the riverfront area mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited for because yeah. the like what young people are going to be excited for is be to be able to you know go downtown where there's a lot of people interact with people but not feel like uncomfortable because yeah I mean, you find some park, let's say you go downtown and we learned this from making videos. You go downtown, you park somewhere. It might seem a little bit of a shady place to park. And then you're like, all right, we're going to walk down here. You, it's just seems a little stretched out. There's not yeah. a lot to do really. Um, but that's something that I'm super excited for in the future is to, for that, that plan to go through. But I think there's still a lot that we can do right. uh, to help that. For sure. And if anyone wants to know your opinion on Century 2, I'll plug your video. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's another one that I was like, oh, no, this is probably going to be bad. But that, that's an honest opinion, honestly. I yeah. think that that area could – because it's actually nice. When we when you go to the – or I haven't been, obviously, to the new ballpark, but the old ballpark, yeah. 
that view of downtown. It's actually a nice. Awesome. View. It's, it's so cool. It's, yeah. It's yeah. It's it's unique. It's different. But um, there's spaces there that's not being used, and it yeah. definitely could be used. And when they release it, the new plans for uh, that area, I was so excited. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make a video. If people hate me, they hate me. But this yep. is what I feel like is yeah. Work. That's how it goes, though. Yeah. Um. So last question: What does Wichita mean to you? Um, man, I think again, not to sound so corny, but, um, being away from where I am originally from Argentina, I always, my whole life, I thought, you know, that's home and Wichita is kind of like the, the side city, <laughs> the side home. <laughs> right. Um, but I think as I, I mean, now I almost can't picture myself like in reverse, like I can't right. even think about growing up there. So really it is just like, it is like my true home, even though sometimes I don't even want to say that. Like, I feel like, oh no, I'm, Ar I'm Argentinian till I die. You know, that's my home. That's my hometown, whatever. But at the same time, like I grew up most of my life here. Mm -hmm. All of my friends are here, you know, I have my whole family here or most of my family here. Um, I don't know. It's just like home to me now, yeah. and which is weird to even think about. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I feel you. Um, so I will plug all your stuff. Kevin, this was awesome. Thanks for coming on. Um, yeah, plug everything for Brain Bros. Is that yeah. social media, same thing, everything? Yeah, social media. Um, uh, even when you jump on, I mean, our Twitter is the same. I mean, it, literally everything. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I'll plug it all below. But um, yeah, this was fun. We'll have to do it again Thanks. sometime. Thanks for having me. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Thanks for doing it, man. I'll have a good one. Have a good one. And I'll talk to you later. Thanks.